Welcome to the live stream. My name is Megan. And I'm Jay. And we're just so excited that you're here with us. As you can see, it's a little bit different this week. But the one thing that's a little weird is I can feel about 15 sets of eyes. Are you getting a little looking. stage fright? I feel like you're getting just a little bit of stage fright. No, it's just a little awkward, but I feel like you're excited. I mean, I'm excited about it. Are y'all ready to worship? Let's go. Are y'all ready to worship? All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. We hear you. We're excited. But we have a couple announcements before we jump into worship. Um, if you're streaming with us for the first time, I just want to say welcome. welcome. I'm so yes. glad you're here. The host is actually dropping a link in the comments right now. So go ahead and click it. Fill out our Connect card yeah. um, because people are our focus. And yes. I, I just want to get to know you and we want to get to know you. Um, yeah. And that's one of our values around here. But I bet you Jay can't say another one. Oh my. Okay. Another one of our values is we believe around here generosity is our privilege. And I remember when I first started started really giving God my first and giving God my best in my first tent. Um, it was really difficult. Megan is a natural at it. She'll blow your socks off with generosity. But how many of you know when you start to really like get that 10% in that first check, you like, I could give it to God or I could give it to like some Christian chicken or some no, Hattie no, B's, you did some not. hot chicken. You did not. Amen. Hey, don't mess with my hot chicken. But I realized when I really started to give God my first, then he didn't only do something through people, but he also did something inside of me and my faith really started to grow. So you can give and be a part of that at www.zealchurch.tv slash give. I almost forgot that. That'd have been bad. Yeah, well, That'd have been, have been. Giving's a big deal. It's a big deal. But you know what else is a big deal? Great segue. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our kids yes. and all of our student team. They've been working around the clock to yes. make incredible content for your family. So if you're a parent, write this down, grab a pen, um, head over to zealchurch.tv slash ZK online. Yeah. Um, the content's like YouTube It's incredible. Level. It really is. It's like YouTube level. It's better than YouTube. How would you like your kids to watch this rather than YouTube for five hours? That's, that would be impressive. It's like church online. Well, it's kind of what we're doing. It's kind of what we're doing. <laughs> kind of what we're doing. Hey, really quick. One last announcement. Everybody, I don't care where you're at. I don't care if you're on your couch. Give me a drum roll. Everybody, everybody here. Give me a drum roll drum real quick. Roll. Hey! We're starting second oh. Saturday serves. Hey, I'm so excited about it. Yeah! yeah. I love it. We're starting so second good. Saturday serves. You've asked for opportunities to be able to serve more, and we're giving it to you. You can go, and you can go on the App Store and download the Serve app. If you have an Android, you go wherever you get. Hey, they're not less than. Like, they're, they're not the, less than. Your, your phone is less than. But wherever you... <laughs> I hurt some people. I hurt some people. But hey, go download the Serve app. If you want to join a Serve project, I already have one. You can join mine. Or my favorite thing that I've ever heard is see the need and be the answer. If you see something in your community, join, like start a group. Let's get some people together and go love on people. Yeah. I'm so excited. You don't seem as excited about it as I do. Well, I am. Okay. But I feel like everyone behind me is just really excited yeah. to worship. Y'all are ready to worship. We're taking up a lot of time. Yes. So, okay. Y'all ready? So, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to pray for us. And then we'll get started. Yes. So, God, we love you. That's not just something we say. We really do love you. Thank you for us being able to just do this life with you and come into your presence and worship you and be the church. Father, thank you for allowing us to be the church. I pray that you reach every single person that's engaged in this right now, Father, and that you just change our hearts, God. No matter if this is our first day with you or our 20,000th day with you, God, we love you so much. And it's in your name that we pray. Everyone said amen. amen. Come on, church, as we begin to worship, let's lift our eyes, let's, let's lift our hands, let's close our eyes, let's stand up and let's worship the Lord. Let's honor him this morning. Sing, I cast. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus lay and died for me. I see his wounds. His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. Sing His body, His body bound and drenched in tears. They lay Him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance. Still and all 
Sing your praise in it.
and strongholds not be moved, will spirits not be silenced, and cower on his road. For if my God is for me, then what have I to fear? And I will not deny him the glory. Pastor JD's message. And I know if you're watching, you're just as excited as me because we've been diving into the power of the gathering. And I just believe it's going to change lives. It's changed mine. And so, but before I do that, I just want to challenge you at the end of the message, text a friend, go talk to your roommate, call your mom and share something you've learned because there's power in your perspective and there's power in what God is speaking through these words today. So that's my challenge, but enough of you, enough of me. Um, I just want everyone to give a big round of applause and welcome Pastor JD. Come on. Ready? What is up? Man, I, I don't know about you, but I feel something in the room and I'm excited that you are here for this moment. And I don't, I want you to know that I don't take this moment for granted. I believe that, that God uses technology and I'm thankful for all the people that are working so hard to make moments like this happen because I know that there's a lot of people that really need what God has for them. And so I want you to know if you're hurting, or I want you to know that if you showed up to this broadcast via YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or somebody shared or somebody inboxed you the link, I want you to know that I believe the power of God the legitimate, authentic Spirit of God steps into these moments. And I really believe that God can do something in these moments that would forever change your life. That's not just, that's not just preacher talk. Like I, I really, really believe that God has something special for you. And I'm thankful that we were able to worship together. Wasn't that unbelievable? Wasn't that great? And so uh, I don't know about you, but that, that was a great moment. And, and I don't like the way y'all patty cake. Can we do that again? Wasn't that awesome? Can we, I thought, what, what a good time. And so 
Uh, I'm excited. I don't want to waste a lot of time. I want to get right into what I believe what God has to say. So grab your notes, grab your phones, however you take notes. I want you to get ready to dive in. You can go to Matthew's Gospel in your phone. We're going to be in the uh, MSG version. I'm going to have a seat so I don't go too crazy. Ooh, that kind of slips down. Let me see if I can get this thing up. Oh, there it is. How does that feel? Is that, is that a little better? Uh, I want to go to Matthew chapter 16. And I want to dive in. We've been talking last week. We talked about the promise that God has. God promised that he, he would leave something and nothing would be able to stop it. And I, I, want to, I want to make sure that we remind everybody that whatever God has, whatever he left, didn't just work then. What if God is so smart, he's omniscient, all-knowing, all-powerful, that if he left something in his absence, then it would work for eternity. And God left something and said that it would be unstoppable. So I do want to dive right back into the same text we had last week. And I want you to know if you showed up to this moment and you need what only God could provide, then I don't believe this is going to be a casual moment. So I don't want you to just watch. I want you to lean in. Everybody say lean in. I want you to lean in to what God could be trying to do in this moment. Can I pray? Is, is that okay with you? Danny, could you help me? Can we? Danny, there, you, there it is. Doesn't that feel good? Father, thank you. Thank you for knowing what we need before we ask. Thank you for giving us truth in a world filled with opinions. I thank you that you don't change. You're so good you don't have to. I thank you that we don't have to get a version 2.0 of you. I thank you, Father, that we don't have to get the upgraded God. I thank you, Father, that however you showed up was good 2,000 years ago, and it's good today. So, Father, I pray for my broken, my hurting friends. All of us are broken in one way or the other, and I just pray that you would show up and give, give some hope today. I pray that you would show up, Father, in a way that's just flat out unmistakable. And when you get, we'll give you all the credit. We'll give you all the praise. And everybody watching said, amen. 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 Let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Jesus himself is talking to a guy formerly known as Simon, and he's changing his name, and then he's giving him a promise. Everybody say promise. promise. He's giving him a promise that you need, and the reason that you need it is because a lot of the promises of God are anchored to this promise. This would be a core promise when Jesus showed up on the scene. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Let's go. It says, you are Peter, not Simon, which means read back and forth, but you're Peter and that you're a rock. And this is the rock. In other words, I'm doing something in you and I'm doing something in you and, and on which I will put together. Everybody say together. Yeah. I will put together my church. This is Jesus talking. I'll put together. Everybody say together put together my church. Now watch how he describes this church, this thing that he left. Jesus left and he left a church and he said he was going to put it together by say together, together, together. A church so expansive with energy, so expansive, ever growing. If you have something, you can get it there. Energy, you feel low on energy. You feel low on joy. You feel low on hope. You can get it there. That not even the gates of hell, all the power of the enemy of your life, would not be able to keep it out. So we camped out and we, we, we really put our pegs in the ground of this statement. If, if Jesus was going to leave and give us something that he said would be unstoppable, we better figure out what this unstoppable force would be. And so last week we dove in and we figured out that that Jesus didn't speak English. Jesus spoke Greek. And the, the word, the original language of what he said was this. It was, it was, I will build my, and the Greek word is ekklesia. And it doesn't mean holy place like us Americans would say, like, I'm going to church. It means holy people. Literally, it means an assembly or a gathering. He was saying, I'm putting together a gathering of people. And nothing would be able to stop it. And so we, we, learned, we learned last week that, uh, that you aren't the church. You, you guys remember this? If you haven't, you got to go watch it on YouTube. But, but you, you aren't the church. And some of you have been told that. You aren't the church. But, but biblically, we would say, but you and you, you are the church. So it, 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 was, it wasn't a person. It wasn't a place. It was a people. And he was putting them together. And if you ever got in there, the promise was it would be unstoppable. If you stepped into the promise, 
you got God's presence as we see two chapters later. So let's go study this one for a minute. Matthew chapter 18, I'm going to do this every week so that you get the core of God promises because in the middle of a storm, you know what you need? You need to anchor to something that you can trust. Okay? So you can trust Jesus. Anybody who predicts their death and resurrection and then does it, uh, you can trust him. Okay, so here, here's, here's Matthew, a guy who was there, first-hand account. Here's what he writes. He said, when two of you get together, everybody say together. together. It's crucial. You've said it four times. I want you to do it five times. Here we go, together. together. Okay, when, when two of you get together on anything at all on earth, think about how powerful that is, and make a prayer of it. My Father in heaven goes into action. So, so you've been praying something by yourself, but, but if I can ever get you, everybody say it, together. Then the Father goes in. There's power when you get around the people. And when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure in a world that is unsure, in a world where there is shifting sand, if you want some cement, if you want something to stand on, you can rest assured that I will be together. What's interesting is he promised that there would be people and the benefit of the gathered, assembled people was that I'll be there. Think about how big of a deal that is. God promises if you can ever get together, despite the things that could divide you, despite the argument, if you could ever figure out a way to get together. And by the way, he said this pre-pandemic. <laughs> if you could figure out a way to get together, he just knew, didn't he? If you could ever get together, he promised his presence. One of, the, one of the verses in scripture says, in his presence there is fullness of joy. How's your joy doing? Because if you can ever get around his people, you can get the presence. And in the presence of God, when God shows up, there's fullness of joy. What's interesting to me is that the promises of God were predicated on the togetherness. If you look back at the scripture, he said, I will put together my church. Which came first? Together. He said, if you get together, my father will go into action. What's first? Together. It's interesting to me that Jesus is trying to paint a picture that he lived himself. He's not one of those leaders that says one thing and does another. Jesus himself, totally perfect. He had to have some people. And we, he went and got some ordinary folks. He got some good fishermen, some guys who would betray him. And he chose him anyway, because even though he knew Judas would betray him, he knew he needed people. It's the beauty of being together. You know, most of the problems in our world right now, I think most of the issues that I have, the anxiety, the what to do next, most of the issues that you have, my guess, I'm going to go out on a limb, my guess it's because we are disconnected. My guess is the reason why some of you, it's, you've ha you have less hope than you thought you would. Some of you may have less purity. I had some standards, but in the season, man, I'm just struggling with purity. Less hope, less, less courage. You're shifting now. You, you had certainty, but now you're just kind of all over the place. You went, from, you went from Peter back to Simon, and you went from Paul back to Saul. You, you just feel like in some ways you've reversed, and... I think it just could be that you're disconnected. Because remember, the promise was predicated on together. But that lets us know something. If the promise comes when you're together, then the opposite paralysis comes when you're disconnected. You, you know what's frustrating? You know what the most frustrating thing on planet Earth is? And you know this. I don't have to tell you. When things are disconnected. True story. This week, um, lightning struck a transformer. Uh, in our neighborhood, and the power went out. And if you know, if you know me, um, I'm not like the most maintenance dude ever. <laughs> so like, I'm like, no, I don't know what to do. I'm just crying. I'm just back then. What are you doing? I don't know what to do. Like, I had no clue. I'm like, do we grab a chainsaw? Like, don't make fun of me. Like, I just, I didn't know what to do. And I'm running around and I'm freaking out. And I'm asking my 10 year old, he's like, dad, your dad. I don't know what's, what you should know what to do right now. And I'm asking Lee and I'm like, I got this. She's like, no, you don't. You're scared. And I'm like, I don't care. It's whatever. But anyways, like for an hour and a half, my kids didn't know what to do. Like with, with no power, we had no clue what to do. Right. But I want you to think about something just for a second. We ran out of power. Here's what I didn't do. I didn't go to every device in my house and get angry at it. 
TV. <laughs> Sony, you better get your act together. I didn't do that. I, I didn't go to the microwave and just, ugh. <laughs> you are the worst microwave. I, like, I didn't get mad at the double oven. I didn't get mad at the dishwasher. I didn't get mad at the charging station because I understood the real problem wasn't the issue I was looking at with my TV. The real issue is if it's disconnected, there's no power. I wonder if some of you have been getting mad at the dishwasher of your life and creating arguments about the dishwasher, not knowing you don't have a dishwasher problem, baby. You've got a power issue. You've got a connection issue. Some of you have been complaining about the internet and the streaming of your life. You don't have a stream problem. You don't have a Hulu problem. You have a disconnection. I wonder if our frustration has been aimed at something that's not the real issue. It's not the TV. Let, let me bring it to your world. It ain't the marriage. It's not the singleness. It's not your neighbor's fault. Your best friend hasn't deserted you. Your boss doesn't hate you. Well, maybe. That's because you show up late every day. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Can I tell you what I think it could be? I think a lot of the problems that we have that we're blaming on maybe individuals could be we're just disconnected. Because I don't have to preach to you and create a brilliant illustration for you to understand that most things in life that matter don't have a lot of power if they're disconnected. And I need you to understand something. God has promises for you. But you can't get the promise without the connection. And some of us may be walking through life mad at the wrong thing, not understanding that the TV can't turn itself on. You have to have connection in order to get a power. Listen, I'm not the maintenance guy, but I have figured out if I'll go to the breaker box and reestablish the connection, all of a sudden things in my life will turn on. So let me, let me bring it to your world. Everybody say, check your connection. Are you, are you low on faith? Just a question, just be honest. And you don't have to answer in the comments. You, you can keep anonymous. But like, like, are you low on faith right now? You feel like it's hard to believe for more? Check your connection. Who's, who's encouraging you? Are, are, you, are, you low on, are you low on hope right now? You wake up and you feel like you, you got a clouds. Check your connection. Check, 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 check it. Who are you connected to? Who's standing in agreement with you? Are, are you low on purity right now? Don't blame him. Don't blame her. Check your connection. Who's holding you to the standard you decided before the storm? Check your connection. How many of you got, uh, somebody, somebody, you're low on peace. I'm just all over the place. I'm so full of anxiety. Check your connection. Who, who in this season's got your back? I'm low on love right now. I just, I feel so lonely. Check your connection. Who's praying for you right now? You mad, bro? Remember that? Remember that statement 10 years ago? Mad, bro? Ch -ch -ch Check your connection. Because the, the further I study the scripture, the more I realized there's power in connection. From the first book in scripture of Genesis all the way through Jesus Christ who comes as a perfect God to an imperfect earth. He chooses to, die, to do life alone. You know why? Because Jesus knew that the promise of the Father rested on the shoulders of connection. When Jesus, when Jesus got ready to leave, the first thing that the Father did was get the people that saw everything in an upper room. There's a guy named Luke who was a doctor who watched it all, who wrote it down. And I want to take you to the scripture. Uh, if, if you have your Bibles, do this. Go to, go to Luke chapter 24. We're going to go in the Amplified Version. Come on, somebody. You ain't heard that in a minute, okay? Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And I'm about to give you some, in, I think, some incredible practical things that are just simple. Don't, do not make the mistake of underestimating simplicity. Sometimes you're looking for grandiose, and God's just trying to get you to come back to home plate. 
Because a lot of you, what you need is you need power to overcome. You need power to have some joy back. You need power for purity again. You need a power to stop clicking on things. And you know what God's saying? I've already given it to you. You just got to plug it in, plug it in. Hey, plug it in, plug it in. Some of y'all don't even remember that commercial. It was a plug-in air fresher commercial, but it'll preach. Plug it in, plug it in. That is no problem. Plug it in. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24. I want you to see what Jesus himself said because Jesus is getting ready to leave and and deliver his plan for the world. The hope for the world is this ecclesia. He knew the world would get dark and he would need to have people that were full of light. But you can't have light if the power's out. You can't have light. You can't have joy if the power's out. So check your connection. Once again, everybody say, check your connection. Luke chapter 24, verse 49, the backside of this chapter. Jesus says this. Listen carefully. I'm sending the promise of my Father. And the Amplified Version says the Holy Spirit. That's the promise of the Father upon you. But you are to remain. Everybody say remain. Remain. That that, that just means together. Don't be too quick to leave. Don't be too quick to, to get so... So cynical and so analytical that you put yourself on an island and blame everybody. No, 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 no. You got to get back to get the promise rest on the shoulders of the connection. So you got you got to remain. Do not be quick to leave the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed. I love this word. You need to underline in their Bibles, write that out. Clothed. God's trying to put power on you. You have too big of a purpose not to have power. You are too good of a toaster not to be plugged in. Come on, somebody. God is trying to do something through you, but he can't do anything through you if you're not plugged in and connected. And so he says, until you are clothed with power, you need power not from an outlet, baby. You need power from on high. There is power in connection. There's something that happens when you get together. There's power. In fact, one of our wonderful sisters, one of the wonderful moms of this house, her name is Debbie Yoho. She serves on the prayer team. Let me tell you what the prayer team is. When we have connections, when we have gatherings and services, there are teams of people that pray. But but Debbie didn't start off like that. I want you to hear Debbie describe the first time she came into a gathering, a connection, and how she felt. Because what you'll find is God's promises never fail. Check this out. What brought me to Zeal was that I was going, and my whole family was going through a very difficult situation. And I can remember the very first day that I went in, and there was all these young people there, which I loved. And so I remember walking into the area where we were going to be um, praising and worshiping, and there were people there, and there was such a presence of God. And so I'm like, wow. And, and I didn't know how to take it at first, and so I, I continued to sing with them, and, and, I, and then just all of a sudden the tears just started coming mm-hmm. like a river. I was trying to find a word to describe what had happened that day, and um, and the word that kept coming back to me was celebration. Mm. These people are celebration, celebrating the presence of the Lord. When the presence of the Lord is there, the, there's light, and there's peace, and there's joy. And I felt all of that, and it began to heal me, and over a period of time, the Lord just really healed me through the praise and worship and gathering with his people. God put us with people. And that's where we need to be. Yeah. In church and communities and everywhere. God has put these people in your life and that and that it makes you so glad and so blessed that people care about you and, and they're there for you to care about them and I mean, when you're together like that and you're in one accord and you're, and you're praying for something, you just can feel the presence of the Lord and you know, you know that you, somebody's got your back. Mm-hmm. And they care enough to pray for you or they care enough to pray for some other need. And um, God just made us to be a part of one another. Come on, church, can we give it up for Debbie? I love, love that story. I love hearing raw, authentic stories of normal people like you and I that walked into a connection, a gathering, a togetherness, and experienced what we're talking about, the power of God. In my notes, I remember writing down, my empowerment is tied to my connections. 
In fact, I'll just say it another way that wasn't in my notes. My empowerment is my responsibility. So stop, stop yelling at the washer and the TV. Maybe you just need to go to the breaker box. Maybe you just need to check your connection. Now the question is, what do I connect to? So I want to give you a couple just simple, practical things that you can make a plan for connection. You ready? The first thing that we have to do is we have to be connected with others. Connected with others. A lot of people need to belong to somebody, but before they can believe in somebody they can't see. You have to belong with people. One scripture in Deuteronomy says one can put 1,000 to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. I was thinking about a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says uh, a one-stranded cord is, is easily broken. A two-stranded cord is, you know, it's decent. But a three-stranded cord? Not easily broken. I'm telling you, there is power in connection. So I want to help you with something because I think this is crucial. Our staff has been working, so I want to be very clear about what we're doing so that you can connect with others. If some of you have been saying this, and I can just, I can just hear it because it's been this thing I've said. I've said this a million times. I think I'll just wait. I don't know why I talk Southern. I think I'll just wait till we just get back to physical gatherings before I kind of engage. Can I tell you something? Well, then I have an announcement for you. Physical gatherings launch. Are you ready for this? Physical gatherings launch August 16th. Come on, can we put our hands together? Come on, they launch. We're excited about that. Now, here's the deal. I want to explain that because what we've done is we've worked very hard to resource many locations that will fill, that will look, I'll have the same signage, you will show up and we'll have people serving, but in a way that makes sense within our city's guidelines. And so you're able to feel what it feels like to be at Zill, to experience the culture and worship and hear the preaching of God's word with other people, but in a very safe way. Way And I'm excited and I want you to understand, will there be some inconvenience? Will you have to wear a mask and maybe sit apart? Yes, but I want you to know something. The connection is worth the inconvenience. I'm going to say it again. The connection is worth the inconvenience. And we will be launching many locations that are zeal gatherings. Why would we launch gatherings? Because that's what God promised that if you would get together, God would give you some power. Are you low on faith? Get to the gathering. And I know that there's some people that may be sick or have pre-existing conditions or you feel like you're susceptible to the virus. And I just want to let you know, listen, if that is you, I want you to understand you can still stream on your way to a gathering. You can stream for a little while, but if you are able, I'm encouraging you because we're working hard on the safety side. I want you to begin planning now to attend one of the many locations all over the city because what we are doing, I think is very special. It's brand new. And so some of you need to learn more about it. Some of you need to lead one. So go to zillchurch.tv slash gatherings today. I want you to go today because we have this idea that if we can build gatherings that are safe, you can get your life back on track with what God has for your life. See, so got to connect with others. That launches August 16th. Can we give it up for that? All the teams working so hard to get you back around God's people in a very safe way. And I want to say it again as, as your pastor. I just want to say it one more time. If I can have permission to pastor, the inconvenience is worth the connection. And we're working around the clock to make sure it is safe for you and your family. All kind of options available for kids and all kind of options available for different places. Go to zillchurch.tv slash gatherings and be looking forward to what God's going to do starting August 16th. In fact, we have people training and, and uh, beta gatherings happening right now. We're learning how to do this. We've made a ton of incredible improvements. So I'm very excited about that. So you got to connect with others. And then here's another one. Here's, this is the biggest one because nothing in my life Nothing in your life is affected more than your connection with God. There's nothing in my life that doesn't come from the overflow of my connection with God. Some of us have been getting mad at the wrong person and you have to realize if you've been unplugged, if you've been disconnected from your time with God, I want, I want to invite you to reestablish connection. Come on, go to the breaker box, check your connection. And what we're going to do as a church is get really good at giving you opportunities to connect with God. Now, here's a plan that I have for you. In fact, for five years, our church has been going for five years. Can you believe that? Five years. We've been going for five years. And every bit of momentum, the radical things that we've seen God do, most of those have come out of seasons where we pray harder than ever and we fast. Fast means I'm doing without food so that I can spend more. I'm making room 
for more of God in my life. And I'm here to announce to you, starting August 2nd, we are starting 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're super excited about it. And here's the deal, here's what's incredibly special. We're doing this with hundreds and hundreds of churches because what did God promise? If we could ever get together, God would do something special. And so live on the website, 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, Saturday at 9 a.m., we're gonna have prayer and fasting. And I wanna invite you to go on the journey of a lifetime starting August 2nd. I wanna invite you to pray and fast. Why? Because when you make room for God, you experience more of Him. Remember, it, you gotta check your connection. So I'm asking you to pray and fast because connection with others and connection with God will change the life source. It will change the empowerment levels. It'll change the joy levels and I'm inviting you to that. And I, here's, here's the deal. I know that some of you, some of you, you feel unplugged from God, period. Some of you have never plugged in. Some of you have, you have just so many questions and you've been berated by the enemy of your life and you just need, you need to say, you know what? If Jesus, once again, if he like predicted his death or resurrection and he did it and hundreds of people saw, I'm gonna trust that guy because I've been trying to trust myself and I'm not necessarily the best leader for my life, but there's a lot of you also, you've been around this thing for a while and you need to go to the breaker box. You need to check your connection because you have, you have felt powerless in so many ways. And today's message is to remind you there's power in the connection. And so I, what I want to do is I want to invite you to say a prayer. Right afterwards, just click the button that says raise hand to let us know so we can help navigate you to all the things that God has for your life. But I want to encourage you. Some of you need to, for the first time ever, you need, you need to connect to the creator of your soul. You've been looking for purpose in all the wrong places. You get purpose and power in the connection with the God who made you and formed you in your mother's womb. And so I want to encourage you to, to do that for the first time. And then I, I think I'm really speaking to a lot of people who feel powerless you even feel guilty. You've made some decisions you're not really proud of. You've canceled some people. That's not the gospel. We don't cancel people. We cancel debt. We cancel sin. We cancel, we cancel guilt. We cancel the wrong things, and we love people. And so maybe you need to reestablish. So I want to say a prayer because I think God's getting ready to do something in this city and beyond because he's getting his people together. And you need to connect with others, but you need to connect with God. Come on, all over this room and in every room watching, would you just bow your head and close your eyes? Repeat after me, dear Jesus come into my life. You have permission to rearrange me. Because of your life, your death, and your resurrection, I give you leadership in my life. I need power. I'm tired of doing it by myself. And I need you. So step into my life and I'll follow you wherever you tell me to go. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we put our hands together for the people that just made that incredible decision? So proud of you. Listen, look, look, look in the white of my eyes. I hope you can see the white of my eyes. The best is yet to come. God's promise has never failed. And so listen, God's getting ready to do something. You need to go to zillchurch.tv slash gathering. Some of you just need to learn about it, have a ton of frequently asked questions on there. And if you want to lead one, you can apply right then and there. Some of you have a house, a rooftop. Some of you guys know a business where we can gather between 12 and 25 people in a safe way, understanding that we're going to resource every location. You don't have to come up with stuff. We will resource it to feel like a place that feels like Zill that feels like home for the people who really need Jesus. Thank you for worshiping. Thank you for your generosity. Come on, let's go out and love God. Love people. Enjoy life. See you next week.